I'm Annie, a PhD student with the Neuroscience Mental Health Group and my industry partner, Cambridge Cognition. I'm going to outline some of the modelling work I've been doing for an attention set shifting task. Attention set shifting is basically a cognitive ability that refers to how we shift the focus of our attention according to task demands. So an example of this might be if you're trying to navigate yourself using a map. There's a lot of information on there, so we hone our attention into certain features, such as a course of footpaths. But at some instances, this information alone isn't useful in order to navigate ourselves, and we might have to shift our attention to other features of the map, such as certain landmarks. So this set shifting ability has traditionally been assessed by tasks such as this one from Cambridge Cognition. On each trial, participants will see two stimuli, each composed of one white line and one pink shape. They have to select one of these stimuli and they'll receive deterministic feedback telling them whether their choice was correct or incorrect. They have to do this a number of times for each stage of the task, using trial and error to learn an underlying rule. Once they've learned the rule for this particular stage, they'll move on to the next stage where there'll be a new rule. The rules are fairly simple and it's always that one particular line or shape feature determines which stimulus they should be choosing for that stage of the task, which I've shown here below. Crucially, as you can see, the first seven stages of the task is the white lines that are important, and it's only in stage eight where participants have to perform a set shift to the pink shapes. Task performance is typically measured by errors, which I've got here on the y-axis per stage, which you can see along the x-axis. And this data set of over 700 healthy volunteers shows that for the first seven stages of the task, participants find it quite easy. They're scoring generally under five errors. However, on stage eight, when participants have to perform this set shift, you can see a huge increase in the variation. A lot of participants are finding this much harder and actually failing, which is indicated by the crosses. This would be even more pronounced in a data set of psychiatric patients, most notably in OCD. But what we really want is a mechanistic understanding of why participants are finding this attention set shift so difficult. And that's exactly what the computational approach can add. So the network model that I've been using has two sets of weights, which are the most important part of the model. So the feature weights, which are coloured in green and red here, indicate what the participant has previously learnt about the lines and shapes. And if it's more green, it indicates that they think that this feature is correct on this particular stage of the task. The dimension weights indicate how much attention the participant is paying overall to lines or shapes. Dimension weights are thicker for the lines, indicating participants are paying more attention to the lines currently. These weights are combined to estimate a value for each stimulus. They use this, these values to make a choice, so here they've chosen stimulus 1. They receive feedback, in this case they're correct, and this feedback is then used to update the weights for the next trial. So whilst we think that all participants are using this kind of strategy in order to make their choices on each trial, there are parameters that fit to each individual participant to explain the variation that we see between participants. So the first two are learning rates, kind of varies how, how much participants are using the feedback to update their weights on each trial. And there's a separate one for the feature weights and the dimension weights. The third parameter indicates how much noise there is at the choice level. The last parameter indicates how much participants are paying attention to the lines very early on in the task. So here we've got the same data in green that I showed before, and now in blue we have simulated data using this model for each participant given their best fitting parameter values. And you can see that the human data and the model simulations are matching up fairly well particularly on stage eight, the set shift stage that we're most interested in, where the model is able to capture a large amount of variation. Um, the correlation between the two data sets at this stage is actually greater than 0.85, which is very good. So now I'm going to show you how the model parameters relate to mental health symptoms. So the learning rates from the model are significantly associated with compulsive symptoms. And I've shown both of those here. You can see on the left that the feature learning rates are significantly negatively associated with compulsive symptoms as measured by the OCIR total score. And on the right, you can see that the learning rate for dimensions is also significantly negatively associated with the OCIR. So thanks for your interest. Um, I'm very happy to discuss further and answer any questions. Don't hesitate to contact me um, on the details, using the details here.